Welcome back to the Lawyer Crossover. Your boy PJ here, Mike and Mark with the scarf. And we got a special guest, James the Flight. <laughs> yes. Yeah. James. He's here. Thank you for joining us, James. No problem. Thank you for having me. Uh, please introduce yourself um, so, so our audience knows who you are. Uh, my name is James Forrester. Uh, born and raised in Toronto. Grew up in Richmond Hill here. I uh, made the move to the Philippines about six years ago to pursue uh, my dream of making the PBA. And uh, I was fortunate and blessed enough to uh, achieve my dream. And um, here I am now just to, to tell you a little bit about my story. Let's give a round of applause. Yeah, He's for him to it. come here with us. Yeah, look, look yeah, grounded. Man. If you yeah. see that, that's an Achilles heel. He's yeah, ruptured my Achilles. And it's uh, raining outside, and he's here with us. So yeah, thank you again. Yeah, I, I made the trek, and uh, I'm glad to be here. So that's, that's thank great. you. See, part of Pinoy crossover, we want to spotlight really influential Pinoy Filipino um, ballers that went to the Philippines just to know their story and just to showcase and tell you what's it really like. So James, tell us how did you end up getting to the PBA, because that's, that's a journey in itself. Um, like you said, that's a journey in itself. Um, the PBA, it was a long road, uh, and I felt like once I was really um, immersed in it, I felt like it was, it was a really it's taken a long time to make the PBA, but um, in actuality, it was only like about two or three years for my, for my case. Um, if you're anybody that's trying to make the move from Toronto to Manila, um, I would advise to do the collegiate route. Um, it's first of all, it's a great experience. You get to experience college basketball in the Philippines, which is something uh, that you won't really receive going to school in Canada. I've done both. I've done going to school in Canada, U.S. and Philippines, and it wasn't there. There's nothing like it. So, um, meeting the Philippines. So, if you are an aspiring ball player and you want to uh, make the PBA, that's probably one of the best things to do. So, having said that. I went to Manila in 2012. Uh, I went to Ardeliano University, which is an NCAA school. Um, and yeah, I played two years collegiately, uh, a handful of pocket tournaments, that, you know, that kind of thing. Um, did well, did well enough for me to receive a look to play in the PBA D League. And once I played in the PBA D League, showed out once again. Um, well, like, yeah, and um, that was in 2013. So, so you lived there for quite some time. Cause yeah. You were playing for how long? Four, five um, years in the PBA uh, in the Philippines. I played four years in the PBA, mm -hmm. and prior to that was the two years of playing uh, college basketball in D League. Mm -hmm. We we recently went to the Philippines, and uh, Mark never saw, um, never attended a, actually a Philippine basketball game. We went right. to UAP. But talk about the difference in terms of the vibe and the environment of the Philippine Filipino fans mm -hmm. or the PBA in general as the, like for the culture. Of is there sports. a certain like I guess level of intensity? Like because we've seen as a UAP, it, it is pretty intense. Yeah. Um, is there a difference in the level? The difference of the it's just a lot more passionate and um, fans are are very into the game, um, very very into the game and and. Uh, there's a lot of outside noise, there's a lot of inside noise, there's a lot of drums banging during collegiate games, um, a lot of noise, and, and, and it kind of makes things a little bit more difficult to focus on the court. Um, but then again, if, like, if you're really locked in, then it should be, should be fine for you. I'm curious too, though. How did uh, basketball, before you went to the Philippines, before all that, how did basketball start for you? Like, the, you know, how did, what was your inspiration? What got you started into playing basketball? To playing basketball, it's, yeah, I mean, growing up in Toronto, um, what really was a, the keystone for, for, for me, the cornerstone, I mean, for me and my drive to play basketball was Vince Carter. Like Vince, I mean, a lot of, a lot of Canadian ballplayers will say that, and it's true because if, if he didn't come to Toronto, to the Raptors, and, and started, you know, putting, putting basketball, actually putting basketball on the map on, in, in Canada, I wouldn't have never watched basketball, really. And, um, and it probably like translated to your your high fly. Exactly, man. I would I would honestly watch. That's that's all I do. I was watch Vince Carter, what he would do in, in dunk contests in the in the game, and then I'd go on my driveway or my 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 uh, my buddy's driveway and try and emulate those dunks. Um, so that's that's where it all started for me and, and playing basketball here. It was it was that little. It was Vince, and then after that, started playing in high school a little bit, and and slowly but surely started working my way up. So you said you achieved your dream playing professionally. Now, 
when did it hit you that you were actually playing? Oh my gosh, this is the dream that I've lived. And how was that first game or that first practice? Like, how did that feel and how did uh, you adapt to, I guess, the culture of the Philippines and the weather and all the different yeah. stuff? Yeah, um, well, there's, I probably have two answers to that. The first one is, uh, was my first game in the NCAA. Um, that's where I really realized I was in, I was in the Philippines playing basketball because um, I had never been televised before. I've never been on television, nothing like that. Mm -hmm. And um, so, like, I remember that first game and, like... <laughs> Swagging up. <laughs> I, low key, I, I, I choked, I'm not going to lie. I oh, choked. Yeah. It, was, it, was, it was a tough game yeah. um, as my first one. And, um, and I'll never forget how I felt after, like, after that game. I had, like, about... Like, for, for this, like, at this point in time, seven points was a really bad game. Like, I, it was seven points. Um, a handful of turnovers, and I was. That's why I was just like, man, this is a lot tougher than I thought. Mm -hmm. And um, luckily, I bounced back the next game. Mm -hmm. um, so that was in the NCAA, but the PBA it was probably the game where I had my first uh, career bucket, and that was against Rain or Shine. Uh, it was Hanebra versus Rain or Shine, and I just remember how exhilarating it felt after scoring my first bucket and hearing the crowd chant. Like it was. It was something I'll never forget. It was. It's. It really is crazy, and and it's one of those things that if you're not like if you're not in that moment, if you're not in the you know, the whole grand scheme of thing, like it's, it's hard to explain. So it's just really really good feeling. Talk about like the fans and the fans, and I'm I'm sure when you're out there, you're uh, you're not a typical Filipino looking person. Right, like you're right. foreign foreign looking. Yeah. When you walk down the streets in the Philippi like in the Philippines or in, around the arena, mm -hmm. people notice you, obviously. Yeah. Um, I stand what out. are some <laughs> you stand out? What is you stand out? Yeah. Like high rise, vertically, everything. vertically and everything. Yeah. So uh, are were there any times fans surprised you with things they were gonna say or what were the, what was that encounters like outside of basketball? Mm. I've had a handful of yeah. different encounters. Um but for the most part, it was all love. Um, I mean, prior to making the PBA, I would get a lot of, um, uh, you know, I get a lot of looks, breaking a lot of necks, and just <laughs> from the, just simply from the fact that, yeah, I'm a foreigner in a, yeah. in a, you know, in the Philippines. Little do they, like they didn't know I was Filipino, but, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I do stand out like a sore thumb because mm -hmm. I'm, I'm a good foot, taller than a lot of people, and. Um, for the most part, I understood that it was probably just because uh, they knew I was either a basketball player or some sort of, um, you know, somebody of significance. So mm -hmm. um, I understood that and I never really paid attention to it. But once I got to the PBA and then it just turned into another level of fans coming out to you because now they're shouting your name, mm -hmm. you know, Forster, Forster. So yeah. like people actually recognizing you like that is... It's crazy. It's, it was really, really different. It strokes but. your ego. It, a it little bit. Like, yeah, <laughs> it, it seems like you had a lot of, like, you know, yeah. great things that happened to you and yeah. a lot of positive uh, experience. With them. But what are some of the challenges or some of the obstacles that you went through during your time playing in the Philippines or during that time just living in there? Yeah, um, there's, there's a, lot of, uh, a lot of tough times. It was, it was a really up and down experience for me, but at the end of it all, it was really overall just such a positive and... Um, like yeah such a positive experience overall I learned so much about myself so much about others uh, working with others working with different people and stuff um, so I would never you know like I would never trade it for the world my experience in the Philippines mm -hmm. uh, some of the negative things that I that occurred is just it was tough it was tough once I made the PBA and it was tough uh, getting used to uh, the style of play mm -hmm. um, getting used to what the coaches wanted and and we're you know we're trying to demand from me, mm -hmm. um, and there's a lot of politics involved, and that's that's just in everywhere. You know, it happens in the NBA, it happens in other sports leagues. Mm -hmm. um, so, and in, in the PBA, it is, it, it yeah. Some of the, some of the <laughs> things are heavily popular. Yeah, it's there's just a lot of politics, mm -hmm. for lack of a better way to describe it. And um, I was kind of at the the you know the latter end of that. So, mm -hmm. um, I did have. A lot of success playing in the PBA, but at the same time, I had, I didn't have a lot. I was pretty uns unsuccessful if you mm -hmm. look at my career averages and that sort. Mm -hmm. um, but it's the way you look at it. I I came out of it, and um, you know, I I came out with a with a above. I don't want to say above average PBA career, mm -hmm. but I played more than the average PBA career. Mm -hmm. Average PBA career is like two to three years. Mm -hmm. I played about four, four and a half. Absolutely. So, um, at the end of it all, it was it was great. I love. Love every part of it. If you were to give advice to any young Filipino kids looking to play in the Philippines, what, are, what is your straightforward, honest advice 
for them to be prepared to play in the PBA or overseas in the Philippines? Um, you, you need to be patient. You need to be very, very patient. Uh, as cliche as it sounds, you need to trust the process. You need to trust that everything will work itself out if you work hard. Um, you know, be, be, be faithful in yourself, um, have faith in God, and just be ready to grind and, and, and take it as serious as possible. And, um, you know, this is, this is honest. From the bottom of my heart, anybody can, can really do it. it. It just matters how much you want to work and how much you want to dedicate your life to this.